That was just a very slight pause. And this is a nice fish. Oh man, he's working the heavy water. Hey everybody, it's Benny P with Lively Lakes Fly Fishing. I'm on a beautiful little stream here in my home state of Pennsylvania. I decided to come out today and do a video on a short little quick leader system that we use to fish these small streams here in our home state. This system can be used on other small streams all across the world, so follow along. I'm going to show you the materials that we use and the way that we fish this little leader. Let me go ahead and run you through the materials real quick. I'm going to tie this leader and then I'm going to get on to the fishing. First thing I'm going to start with is our 6x 7.5 foot leader. Followed up by this is the Hannock Cider Line Indicator Line. We have the Hannock Micro Rings. And after you put on your micro ring, you're going to need your tippet. There's the arc tippet. That's 5x. I could be using 4x, 5x, 3x. It all depends on what the fish let me get away with. Okay, I have one of my leaders out. Take your time unwinding that. Now remember, this is a 7.5 foot leader. What I want is approximately 3.5 feet of that leader. I'm going to take that. You can cut that off right at the 3.5 foot mark. Like so. Make sure you put the other piece away. Don't leave it on a stream. So we have three and a half feet. I'm going to take approximately three feet of my indicator line. Cut that off. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cross these lines and I'm going to tie a blood knot. When you do cross these, before I tie my blood knot, I cross approximately five inches and then I tie my blood knot. So if you're unfamiliar with the blood knot, either now or after the video, go check it out. It's an extremely easy knot to tie and this knot is all over the internet. But I'm gonna tie this up real fast. I'm not gonna teach you how to tie a blood knot and then we'll get on with the next step. Okay, with your blood knot tied, your next step is going to be adding your tippet ring. Let me see where I put that. Okay, I found my tippet rings. And you got to be careful with these little buggers. You want to get one out, and you want to place it right on your pointer finger. And I'm going to show you. Do this at home if you can. You don't want to do this on a stream, but since I'm out here, I'm going to show it on the stream. Okay, I got one out. And if you place it on your finger and I don't know if you can see it there but I have to watch and then you put your line get less than an inch away from your line and right like that it's on my line. I don't know if you can see it. Now you can probably see it's on there. You gotta be very careful. Those buggers like to ping like two or three feet away from you and you're never gonna find it. Okay, now that I have my tippet ring on there, at this point, I like to tie a trilene knot. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie my trilene knot. All right, I have my trilene knot tied, but it's hard to grab that little tippet ring and try to tighten that down. So I'll take that piece of leader that I cut off, that other section of leader, I'll put it through my tippet ring, wet it real good, and tighten it down real good. And there, make sure once again that gets put away. And go ahead and nip your loose end. Okay, that is the leader itself right there. I'm gonna back up, I'm approximately six foot tall. And that's my wingspan. And without the tippet, now the tippet you're gonna add to the end of the tippet ring and the depth of your water. For example, the deepest water I'm gonna be fishing today is probably three to four feet, so Mostly two to three feet is what I'm going to be fishing. So that being said, I'm going to only put three feet of tippet on the end of this tippet ring. 
and then I'm gonna put a fly on there and then I'm gonna fish a double nymph rig and I'm gonna show you that once I get that set up. Okay, we're ready to roll. I got my tippet ring on, approximately three feet of tippet that leads down to my first fly and that is a double trouble, lively legs double trouble. Six inches above that double trouble, I have a small split shot to help get everything down. And as long as that works and that's keeping me on the bottom and my flies are continuing to get a nice flow through there, I'm gonna keep that one split shot on. And then 12 inches below my double trouble, for the first time I'm fishing Big Tries Pink Hairs Ears Nymph. slow drift right in this beautiful rainbow right here and if you look that's the big tribes pink hairs ears go ahead and get them back in the water I'm gonna get close to the camera that fish there was a that's a stocked holdover rainbow and the stream I'm fishing today it has a combination of stocked holdover rainbows and uh, wild brown trout, stock brown trout. But um, if you see in the video, I kept my eye on the cider line, brought it through. That was a decently slow drift. And as soon as you see any hesitation, twitch, quick movement, you know, every hit's a little bit different. It depends on the fish where it's sitting, the swirl of the water underneath. And when you see something change in that cider line, when you see a sudden change, you want to set that hook fast because they're not going to hold on to it long and you don't want to give them the opportunity to spit your fly back out. A lot of people, they make the mistake and they think they're just hitting the bottom or catching a branch and a lot of times they're getting hits and they're not setting the hook. So make sure you set that hook. Let's go ahead and see if there's another one sitting in there. I think you're going to see in the video, you're going to see the actual strike on this section, this little spot. So I want to make sure I get some more video right here, if possible. Let's go ahead and move the camera up this way a little bit. wild brown wait till you see this guy I hope you can see the strike in the video as well 
That's a chunker right there. That's a fat boy wild brown. I caught that one on the double treble. Let me get them back in the water. And away he goes. And um, you know, I made that video a week ago, and a lot of the fish were small. We've had some nice cool rain. The actual the streams came down just a little bit, but they're still very high. And um, today may be just bigger fish, I'm hoping. But regardless, I got a nice one on the board. I have a nice rainbow. And I'm going to try to get a couple more on video just so there's the chance that you can see what I'm trying to show you here with keeping your rod in front of your cider line. Cider line, I keep a small sag in mine. In the slower water, faster water, I keep barely any sag at all. It's almost tight lining in faster water. And as soon as you see that move, you have to set the hook. Because these fish are smart. They've been caught before. They live here in the wild. And if you don't set that hook, they're spitting it out. Period. Point blank. just a real small little pocket uh, I stayed on the soft side of it because it was zipping through on the other side pretty fast and big shrouds pink hairs ears it's another uh, beautiful looking stock holdover rainbow trout let me get it out of the net it's in the water right now Okay, I have another great filming opportunity. I'm going to try to keep the leader in the video. Another beautiful brown trout. Holy crap, this is my day right now. Uh, he took Big Shry's pink hair's ears, and that's been the fly today. Thanks, Big Shry, for coming up with that one. Okay, let me get him out of here and give you a look at him. Send them out to this big hole. And if you look at that in the video, some of these brown trout had a, they have like a pinkish tint to them sometimes. And they're just beautiful. But uh, there it is, a couple nice brown trout with the uh, quick little leader I made today. You get to see it working on brown trout, rainbow trout, and I'm blown away that the big shrouds, pink hair's ears, is catching nice sized brown trout today. I'm not surprised that the bigger browns are hitting because there is some murk in the water, but they're going after that pink hair's ears over the double trouble right now, and that's usually not the case. Before I continue on, because it's not quite as loud here, the water's very, very loud, it's ripping today. Do you notice before I go to net my fish, I'm not standing straight up in the air. I was taught that a long time ago by my dad and one of his good friends, Sleeps. That was his nickname, we all have nicknames. Red Dogs and Sleeps taught me that. And uh, the idea of that is you're not over top of the fish spooking the fish. So a lot of times when I have on a nicer fish, I get low because they know this game. And that may calm the fish down a little bit more and help you land the fish. So give that a try. If you can get lower to the water like I do, do that because the last thing you want to do is spook that fish and give them one last run.
Oh, that was a very, very small pause on that one. Just coming down through, and I mean, it was such a small pause. I almost didn't even try to set a hook, but you got to set that hook. You see that pause in your sighter line? Set the hook. Sometimes it's the bottom. Don't set it real hard because you can just bounce right off the bottom and keep going with your drift. There's another little beauty. That worked out pretty good. Uh, I like my cast. I, I like the cast. I like the first cast towards my side of the stream, then in the middle, then the opposite side so I don't spook fish and that cast wasn't on the money, but uh, it was on the money for this fish. Let me get him out of the net here. There he is. Nice looking wild brown trout. And back out into the water. When it works out that good and you hook one on the first cast, you always have to give it a few more in that spot. That was just a very slight pause, and this is a nice fish. Oh man, he's working the heavy water. He is, he is ripping the heavy water. He's very gold. Very beautiful wild brown trout. I'm gonna stay low so I don't spook them. And this is really fast right here, so what I'm doing is I know where I need to reel to get them to me. And that's it, he's in the net. Woohoo, buddy, these are pretty fish, this is it. Oh boy, this is the life. Let me get him out of here. He's a he's a beauty. When am I glad I did another cast? Ho oh, ho! <laughs> Just one more. You know that saying, one more cast. Look at this guy. Hold on, I'm giving him a second to relax. You never want to squeeze fish either. Just lay him in your hand. Oh, that's a chunker right there. Let's put him back in his spot. Man, feisty fish. That's what we like, these feisty ones. That's it, you first cast, you drop it where it needs to be, you hook up with the fish, you bring him in, he doesn't disturb the water, you gotta try some more. You gotta give him a few more casts and there's the reward right there. Typical of rainbow trout, big, slow, deep hole. They like to sit in them. And um, here's another nice looking rainbow trout. There he is, nice chunker. Not a bad fish. Where have I seen that before? Um, they'll sometimes hold together, big slow holes. 
decided to throw another cast in there and see if I couldn't pull out another rainbow or brown trout. And sure enough, nice slow drift. Most of my cider line's under the water when that's going on. And uh, you're just letting your line kind of just slowly bounce across the bottom. And I just, on that one, I had just the tip of my cider line and it boom, went straight underneath. I knew that was a fish. And there it is. Another little chunky buddy there. Little fat rainbow. And that's all it is. I'm watching the cider line. I'm engaged with that. Concentrating, keeping in front, and all this will come together. I'm keeping the tip of my rod in front of my flies, making sure my flies are on the bottom, and they're coming down through. The tip of the rod, my flies are back here. There's a little sag in my line leading down to them, and the flies are bouncing off the bottom, and they come past, trout grabs it, that pauses, or that makes some kind of movement, your cider line, and you set the hook. Another good fish. I'm gonna get low. This is a good one. He's doing some head shakes. To the net. This is probably the biggest one. I got him on, I'm doing a double nymph rig. I got him on my top nymph. And uh, look at that, right in the corner of his mouth is that double trouble, lively legs. It's a sulfur nymph. And uh, I tied it with the grizzly micro legs, his antennas and a tail. All right, let me get this guy out of here. And I can't stress enough, when you're watching that cider line, anytime it makes the slightest pause, that could be a fish. And if that is a fish, you're gonna have sometimes a split second to set that hook because as soon as that fish takes your nymph in, they realize that's not real food and immediately they wanna spit that back out. I always like to compare it to, if you like steak and you would take a big bite of steak and it would taste pretty much like rubber and glue and everything it's not supposed to taste like, your instant reaction is going to be to spit that piece of steak out. That nymph's coming down through the water and it's like a big chunk of steak to, this, to the fish that are out there. And they grab that nymph and if it doesn't taste right, they're going to spit it out. So you have that split second to set the hook. Don't wait for that fish to hit, hit, hit. You want, as soon as you see the hesitation, you have to have reflexes, you have to set the hook. And you're going to get better in time at doing this. Well, I couldn't ask for a better fish to go ahead and close this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to this style of nymph fishing or fly fishing and uh, you learned something, that was my goal today. I'd like to thank everybody for following along. Be sure to like our channel, subscribe, comment if you have any questions, and until next time, best of luck in the water.